Welcome to the She Will Shine podcast, where we bring you the real stories of female business owners. My name is Danielle Price and I'm the founder of She Will Shine, a supportive business network for women. It's time to give a voice to women in business and discover their journey. Before we begin this podcast, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country on which we work at She Will Shine the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and recognise their continuing connection to the land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Hi everyone and welcome to the She Will Shine podcast. Today we have the fantastic Wendy Styles with us. Welcome Wendy. Oh thank you. Yeah it's great to be here. So Wendy you're one of our She Will Shine members. Yes. But for those who may not know you, yes you for, for a few years. Yeah. So Wendy Styles is an experienced and qualified professional photographer who has worked with all sorts of people and businesses. Wendy's mission is to help people and ethical businesses reach their goals by providing authentic organic images that they will love. Therefore, her goal is to work with people who care about sustainability, community, humanity and the planet. Wendy is based here in Melbourne and in her spare time loves getting outdoors and going on hikes or mountain bike rides with her family. And did I just see recently on Facebook surfing amongst those things that you can uh, <laughs> yes, love doing? Yeah, yeah, we've um yeah, I've been surfing for quite a few years, but I'm not very good at it. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. You enjoy it, that's all that matters. That's exactly. I'm enjoying it. I'm still trying to get better, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's I love getting outdoors with family and just yeah, having getting some fresh air and getting my exercise that way. Now, Wendy, obviously with your accent, we know that you're not from Australia originally. Would you like to share with us um, where you were born? Uh, so I was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, in the US. Um, so yeah, it's very very different from Australia in that it's uh, very cold and there's snow for definite seasons. So yeah, I used to jump off the roof into the snow <laughs> oh wow <laughs> in the winter because like you'd, my dad would shovel the sidewalk you know the or the footpath and um so then you'd get these big mounds of snow and so yeah like I remember climbing on the roof and then jumping off into it so yeah a bit different <laughs> very different especially coming to Melbourne of all yeah. places in Australia but you didn't originally come to Melbourne you came to Perth is that right yeah, yeah. I was in Perth first. Um, so I lived there for, uh, for a couple of years. And um, I guess I, yeah, I came from China from there. So yeah, and then I'd, I'd met some, this Aussie over there and um, ended up in um, Perth for a couple of years. And yeah, and then ended up, and then came to Melbourne. Um, you just hit something that I want to sort of delve a bit more into. Where, like, how did you kind of get from North Dakota to China can you fill in those blanks so my mom um is Chinese so yeah so I'm, I'm biracial and um that's she's from Hong Kong though so um yeah I just I studied Asian studies when I at the University of Montana and minored in Chinese and that's how I was part of my degree to go to China but yeah I I always just wanted to I guess learn more about that that side of the my heritage and how long did you stay in China for? I was there for a couple of years, um, not consecutively. So I was there in 1997. Gosh, wow. <laughs> for a year. Then I lived in Perth for, well, I went back to finish my degree in in, um, in the US. And then um, I think I lived in Perth for, for about a year. Or two, and then I went back to China for another year and just um, worked over there and, and taught taught English. And then came back to Australia, back to Perth, and then probably, I don't know, stayed for another year or something and then moved to Melbourne. Did you speak the language? Well, that's what I was there for. Yeah, I was studying studying Mandarin. So yeah, yeah. I did. I wouldn't say I spoke it well, but I, yeah. <laughs> Enough to get by? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. from there, you moved to Perth. Did you have um, any inclinations to kind of start a business or were you just, you just sort of seeing where life took you at that stage? I think I was just seeing where life took me at that stage. Did you find um, like the transition from country different, like in the lifestyles or was that a pretty straightforward? It was, I mean, it was different. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it, I mean, it, it's similar as well in a lot of ways. So um, yeah, it's hard to, It's yeah, I, I would say like now a lot of my friendship close friendships are more international groups like of people where you know you kind of still 
you fit in, but yet you don't fit in. And, and, and in some ways growing up in the way I did, I kind of felt like I didn't fit in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess that's, yeah, how it is. Yeah. Um, but um, back then I, I kind of joined the, I was at RMIT and I joined this RMIT Outdoors Club and that's how I met my husband who, um, and back then we were all just doing, you know, every weekend we would go climbing or mountain biking or back, you know, back country kind of snow trips, um, skiing and snowboarding and yeah, we did all sorts of stuff and yeah, it was loads of fun. Um, and yeah, with that, you know, we'd went climbing in Thailand and stuff like that but then we kind of started pairing off and coupling off and um then people started having kids and so yeah we're not 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 traveling as much but yeah but my husband's from England so we end up traveling to England we're traveling to the states quite a bit so <laughs> I love that so you've met in Australia but you're both from somewhere else it's awesome were you doing photography as a career during these years I was studying at RMIT so it was kind of stuff that I was doing on the side and I actually started off doing more um, landscape photography I guess because I was out in the outdoors and that's probably where my first love of photography began and then later on as I had kids it kind of developed more into portraiture as I you know took photos of the kids and stuff um, but I, I studied all of it when I was at RMIT from all the kind of different aspects of, of photography but um but yeah, but I did always love the travel photography and the candidness of, of that as well. So that's kind of, um, I guess that that merging of kind of nature and, and candidness is where my photography style comes from, I guess. I think that's really evident. Like, obviously, I've seen some of your photos and they're beautiful. But the, like the ones I love the most are the ones where it's like the subject, like the people are with you in the great outdoors and you just the way they work together is so beautiful. Oh, like the color oh, yeah I just the color everything is just gorgeous just and I think it's because you're combining those two together and obviously with your love of outdoor photography for those who are watching the video of this podcast recording behind Wendy is a wall of her prints and you can yeah you can see it right there Wendy like what you love doing it's gorgeous yeah there's uh wedding photos and um there's a couple up there I got to got a couple of awards for and stuff but yeah but yes yeah, there's camping ones there's yeah. a there's a surfing one but it's probably hard to see <laughs> were you working for someone else at the time when you were doing sort of starting to get paid work or were you sort of freelancing on your own from the beginning I've probably always been yeah freelancing kind of from the beginning so yeah when stuff that I would yeah just do on the side for for you know people while I was working because I worked for a charity that um mental health um like yeah worked on their website and stuff but um but yeah it was all just kind of stuff on the side for for a while did you think at any stage that it would become a full-time business? I did want to do that eventually. Yeah, yeah. And it was something that I did do after my second child. So, yeah. Yeah. Did it scare you to do that or did you kind of think it was like a natural progression of your business? Well, I was kind of pushed into it because I was um, made, um, after I was working there for 14 years and then I was made redundant while I was on maternity leave. So I was pretty shocked and unhappy <laughs> about that as you can imagine however I was wanting to move on so I so I did I mean as in move do photography eventually so it, it kind of pushed me into it and then um that's when I started just solely doing the photography did you have um any like family members or friends who had run like who were running their own business I always find this interesting if kind of you come from a family of business owners or it's just, you know, the way your life sort of was evolving in that that was the natural progression and the next step? To be honest, no. My my parents, my dad worked for the railroad for, you know, pretty much his whole life. And and then my mom, um, she she was a cleaner in what was called Ramada Inn, like a hotel. Um, and that's yeah that she only worked there she actually did do some classes some cooking classes on the side for um as well but no they were not kind of yeah they wouldn't have they're very much not people that would have leapt into starting their own business <laughs> yeah yeah because I'm the same because I didn't have anyone close to me that had their own business or anything but it was kind of like I didn't find it as daunting because it's kind of like what kind of just evolved in I was doing a job I wanted flexibility I could do it on my own from home so why not take that step? And that, that's kind of the way it was for me as well. It's like, well, 
I, I kind of after what happened to me too I didn't want to work for anybody else I was just yeah you know, well I'm, I yeah I, I wanted to be my own boss and you know wanted things to be on my terms so and I wanted to do what I loved so that's what I did <laughs> yeah so how did you start like where did you begin um well like I said I'd already been doing some stuff on the side and this was um after my second child so I'd been doing some family and some kind of newborn stuff um for family and you know other or family but um for friends and then although they feel like family sometimes <laughs> paid paid work um and yeah and then it just kind of evolved from there I think as you know as in a lot of those moms and bubs groups and things like that and then um and posted and word of mouth mostly and then yeah it kind of evolved from there I started doing that but then now I've probably moved more although I still do that I move more into a lot more commercial stuff um commercial photography but I still have that same kind of style and element that I I bring to that work yeah. as well. did you move into commercial photography more for the like the steadiness if you know what I mean like the more nine to five type work then just weekends or yeah yeah like well that's basically why I've never done I've not really done weddings because it's all kind of weekend work um but yeah with commercial stuff if it can be done kind of within business hours especially as the kids are growing up it works out it works a lot better but I also love you know working with business you know whether it's women in business or or whoever but I, I like finding out you know what what makes them tick and why they're in their business and what and what they love about it and bringing that kind of into the photos as well and in working with people who have similar interests and similar values as well I found through my own experience like my design business that it leads like all those things make such a big difference to the final outcome like people yeah. might say oh, it's a bit airy fairy you just got to take good photos like no it's not just about that it's about knowing what they stand for um you know sort of having that shared those shared um what's the word the shared mission or the shared purpose or something that you yeah. can both sort of relate to about each other so both sides of the sort of I wouldn't call it a transaction but both sides of the of the party are there bringing their all to lead to the end game and I just think it's amazing what a difference that makes yeah well it's like you're on the same team you you understand yeah. each other you and if you kind of click in that way and with especially with the person you're photographing then it just really comes together and you can really see that personality come through which is what my photography is about so um and those are obviously the type of people that I want to help elevate and see their businesses thrive so so it just yeah it works really well that way and I guess like people don't like having their photo taken like it's one of those things where it's like okay I know I need to do this but you don't always like doing it and so if they can feel comfortable around you yes definitely <laughs> <laughs> so how many years have you been running your business for now Wendy as a kind of on its own full-time kind of thing, it's about six years now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I finished studying at RMIT photography in like 2008. So technically you could say all the way back to then, but that was as it was a bit more on the side kind of stuff. And you've mentioned how it's evolved in um, like doing more commercial work now than what you were doing at the beginning. Have you noticed any other sort of evolution in the business? I don't know it's just kind of it's just kind of growing as yeah as I as I go bit by bit um I'm probably at a good phase at the moment where I'm really happy with where I'm at with it as far as you know the the mix of what I'm doing because I I don't really ever want to give up the 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 family stuff you know even though it, it's you know it's just I love love that candidness and seeing that love but I also love the commercial stuff and I feel like I've got a really good balance now of of that um and I guess that's probably the evolution is just, you know, figuring out what's going to work for me yeah. and, and what I love and, and also what I don't love and, and, and going and figuring out how, yeah, how it's going to work for me. So yeah. and that's still probably an ongoing process and that always evolves and changes, but um, yeah, that's, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. As we evolve, the business evolves in everything and the family evolves and different stages and all that stuff because your two boys primary school aged yeah so it's it's that you know juggle of trying to you know have time with them during school holidays and and you know doing the, the business and you know so yeah it's um it's a juggle but uh but it's my juggle to manage and 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 I you know which I you know I'm happy about in that sense so you know sometimes you, you just have to say no and I think that's probably my biggest struggle at the moment is going okay 
you know, I, I've got to say no to that. One thing that someone once said to me is, if I'm saying yes to you, what what am I saying no to for myself? That's a that's really good. Yeah, it's a really good thing to remember. And it's like in those sort of those times when you've got to think to yourself, oh, I really shouldn't. But we've got those people pleasing kind of traits yeah, yeah. innate in us. It's really hard. Yeah, it is. And it's a growing learning, like every experience is a learning experience. So what do you think the biggest challenge is now that you're kind of based here, your family's here, um, but of course you have larger family overseas, et cetera. Um, and that's for both you and your husband, I guess. Well, it's, I guess we're settled here. And like my husband's actually a business owner as well. So he's got his- Oh, I didn't know that. His own business. He's an engineer. But he's, yeah, very, very settled. He's got quite a few employees. It's a, it's a, yeah. And so for us, I mean, this is home. Um, I, I can't see us really going anywhere else. Um, it's just, I guess it's just hard as your parents get older. Um, so, you know, last year, my, my well, might not, it was actually to the very end of 2020, my dad passed away at the, um, during the lockdowns. And yeah, I guess I guess the biggest challenge with that was like with with COVID, we never expected. I always thought it would just be a plane ride away. If something yeah. happened, I can I could just get I could get back, but I couldn't. And so I think that that was quite a challenge having to, you know, apply to leave the country. Then it got rejected. Um, and then I applied again and could go. And you know, we had to wait several months before we could have the funeral. Um and we were just kind of waiting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and no well, one could have predicted yeah. that happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we hope that that's not going to happen again, but yeah. I guess you never know. So, um, and, you know, my husband's dad's getting older too. So it's just, I think those are the kind of the challenges you face as, yeah, being someone who's yeah, not born here and has family overseas. Yeah. You've made a nice little community around yourself though, haven't you? Like where you're based and. The friendships you've made yeah I have you know it's a I live in inner west Melbourne and and um there's a really nice community around here and then I've also got my friendship group from you know the outdoors where we always go camping and stuff together so um it's yeah and the kids kind of have grown up as almost like cousins really as we go we always have big camping trips so it's you know yeah we've had a I think we've made a nice a nice life here so I guess the second part of the question that I was going to ask was what's what's been the biggest challenge that you've seen business wise oh look I think it's balancing everything business wise you know because you're you're on your own and I you know I try and outsource this and out you know whatever but you still got to manage it you still got to decide and what can I do what can I do oh I should be doing you know there's you're working in your business and on your business and sometimes you know, the moment I feel like I'm just working in it because I've, I've been really busy which I'm not complaining about but then it's which is great but then you know you got all these other things and I think it's just trying to manage all that is the biggest yeah. the biggest challenge um for me and um it's not it's not necessarily it's not a bad thing it's a it's a good thing but it's it's still a challenge <laughs> yeah that's right I find that too like I've been in business for myself gosh um she's 14 years or so now mm. but it's still a challenge because I think you think you've got it down pat and then yeah. kind of the kids get a bit older and the routine kind of changes or something changes and then it's like oh okay I've got to start again and work out kind of how I'm structuring my days and where I'm spending my days and how much of this time I need to you know the business needs me doing like you said you're spending a lot of time in the business especially when you'd be busy yeah yeah in yeah. the business you know take photos editing everything um and then you kind of like, oh okay marketing okay when's that going to happen and but it's, it's it's a constant juggle it is a constant juggle so yeah it's um but yeah that's that's I don't know <laughs> <That is. laughs> do you find it good like I, I can't imagine having a husband who runs his own business did you find that you can kind of have those conversations because you have similar sort of pain points in biz yeah, yeah. Like he, he I, I can definitely bounce ideas off of him. Not, he's not, you know, a creative person. He's an engineer, but in in the sense of, like, it's yeah. He he he's happy to listen because he knows what it's like. However, he does have you know a lot of people that he can talk to within his business because he's got his business partners and and um and so forth. But 
I think he he appreciates that he does have them and can understand that I don't. And so he's quite happy to, to, you know, listen, which is really good. So Wendy, what, what do you, like you said, you're really happy where the business is now. Mm -hmm. Like I, what I really love about she was shining our members is we don't all want the big empire. We just yeah. want to have the business that, you know, works for us, works for our family, our responsibilities we love doing it. We love our um, clients. It pays the bills. It brings that joy. Like that's our definition of success. Is that your definition of success? Do you want to go bigger or are you happy with what you have as it evolves organically? I'm, to be honest, I'm happy with what I have. I don't really want to, I've never kind of wanted to be the, you know, big person, big go-to photographer that everybody goes to. Like, you know, it's not, I want I want to be the photographer that I have a good relationship with my clients with and, and have that balance. So I feel like, and I feel like I've got that. So yeah, it's just managing, uh, managing it, maintaining it, you know, and uh, making it sustainable is, is um, I think is where I'm at with it, but yeah. 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 And I a hundred percent agree. It's like, we don't all need to be that big um, conglomerate or whatever it is. Um, but I think sometimes as well, we feel that we should be, like we're pressured in kind of thinking that that's what we should be aiming for, I guess, with all the marketing that we see on socials, et cetera, et cetera. Six-figure business this and blah, 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 yeah, that. And it's yeah, kind of like, yeah. it's like, no, so you kind of question what you do want along the yeah. way as well. I totally feel that, like you feel pressure. Oh, I should be doing, because especially with like Instagram and all the rest, and you're like, oh, that person's doing this and that person's doing that. Well, I should be doing this or I should be doing that. And and, you know, you kind of got to turn it off sometimes and just go, well, no, what do I want? And I don't actually want to be doing those kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. um, even though you feel like you probably should, it's like, well, no, I'm, I'm just, you just have to make your own path and, and, and be happy with it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Do you think, Wendy, if you had like your path to kind of finding photography through your um, Chinese studies and things like that, would you have done anything differently? Look, there probably is, but I can't actually think of it <laughs> because I've gotten to where I am and, um, you know, I've gotten and I've experienced so many different things that if you kind of just go straight into one thing, then you miss out on the experience of everything else. So, um, yeah, I, I guess... No, I can't think of anything that I would really change, but yeah, because yeah. one thing led to the next. Yeah. So even if there's a certain experience that wasn't great, um, if I didn't have that, then, you know, it, it wouldn't have led me down the next path. So it's all about the journey, right? Isn't that what they say? Yeah. 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 The journey, not the destination. So what do your boys kind of think it's normal for everyone to run their own business? Because dad does it, mum does it. Like, is that? <laughs> oh, do. I don't know. <laughs> um yeah I don't know they they probably do I guess I don't know yeah we haven't really discussed that but maybe we should I find it interesting because um one time oh this is going back for years but my daughter said I think there was something that she I don't know I could take the day off to do something with her I can't remember what it was and she's like oh mum you know you don't you are the boss you don't have to ask but daddy if he wants the day off he's got to ask his boss and it's like it's funny how they kind of take in that kind of stuff yeah 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 I find it really interesting sort of to see what they, especially at a young age, she's now 10, so it's a bit different, but at a young age, what they comprehend and what that kind of, you know, mummy works for herself. So if I need something, she can come to the school and bring it or, you know what I mean? Like that, what does it equate to for them? Yeah. Well, I think for a while they found it hard to, because da daddy still goes to an office and, you know, every day. Whereas I kind of work from home or here, there. And so I think it took them a little while to understand that I actually was working. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, you know, when they're little, they kind of didn't realize what I, you know, what I was doing. Um, but now they they can see what I've done and, and photographing and, and yeah. So do you see the creativity in them? Well, they've gotten to be pretty good models. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're, they're used they come, to photographed, although my youngest one's starting to rebel again and so he, he does this kind of thing, but I can usually get him to laugh or something. But um, they're, I, yeah, I don't know. They're, they don't seem to, they, 
they kind of split really because like they, they're you know their dad's an engineer and then I'm a, I'm a photographer so they get you know they like they love maths like my husband's always asking them maths questions and things like that so they seem to kind of really like that but yeah I, I think the creative thing we'll have to we'll have to see yeah see how they yeah go. yeah it's interesting I find it really interesting to see kind of both me and my husband we met at um, when we were studying design so we're both designers but like you said, my son's really good at maths and um, geography and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, where does he get that from? <laughs> <laughs> what I found with photographers in general, generalisation, but within our community, I found this, the, um, the sense of collaboration with other photographers, mm. I find it really amazing how um, photographers sort of band together and help each other and um you know, some industries are more competitive than others and all that kind of crap that goes on. But I've never seen that with photography. I've just really seen, with, well, maybe it's because they're female photographers that I've been sort of exposed to, but it's very much a collaborative space. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we can always, we can learn from each other. And also it's great to have a group of people that um that understand your business and we can you know empathize and also to refer to like if I'm really busy I can't take a job um it's great to know that I can I've got somebody that I can refer them to that I know will do a good job and I can trust and and so um I looked at, I think there's just plenty of work for everybody even if you know I know it's it's a competitive industry yes but I still think there's plenty of work and every photographer is different in their style as well yeah. So in, in what they do and what they, what stories that they're, they're going to tell for that particular person. So, yeah, I, I think the more the merrier, really. And um, I know that you've, like, won a few awards along the way as well. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Because I think it's amazing. Some of it was landscape photography way back when yeah. that I, I'd, I'd won some awards for. And, um, yeah, so I think... That one was called Sight Unseen. That was quite a few years ago. But um, and um, yeah, recently I was at a conference and um, I took a photo of my son for um, it was just, you know, basically what COVID was. And it was a picture of of him wearing a mask between a in, in one of these wire fences. And so it was going through the fence and you just see him with the mask on and then his eyes through there and um behind you can't see it it's all blurred out but it was when all the playgrounds were closed and everything and it was just that was what kind of summed up um COVID for me and um so yeah at that conference that one won because yeah it was black and white as well that one but um yeah I, I don't know it's um I just it's nice to enter competitions and just get get a bit of feedback and whatever but yeah that one I won a printer so which is um, a professional grade printer. So that was pretty exciting. So now I can print awesome. my own photos. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. I love it. And I love that you are entering these awards. Like a lot I of I do once kind of, in a while, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. but still once in a while, that's, that's better than none at all. And I just think sometimes we're so caught up in what we do that we kind of don't come up for air and kind of, um, you know, well, it's nice when you're working for someone else, you kind of have that external validation of people saying, oh, yeah, that was a good job. You did great on that. You don't always get that when you work for yourself. Yeah, yeah. But it's also good to come back and just do projects for yourself and finding that time. And otherwise you kind of lose your love of what you do if you're not doing stuff for yourself as well. So it's it's really about finding that time to do that. Um, you know, I love photographing my kids and you know other and other things but so, but sometimes it's hard finding that time to I don't know do something maybe different or challenge yourself in a different way and do you think that um like moving forward that will continue to be a challenge like is that something that kind of is always there well yeah it's like again it's that it's finding that that balance because yeah if you get too burnt out then it's, um, you know, you just kind of, you know, it's the builder who doesn't want to work on his own house kind of thing. Yeah. And I don't want to get to that that stage. And so, yeah, it probably will be that a challenge of just, you know, maintaining that balance to be able to, you know, maintain your your love for it. So, Wendy, are you comfortable in front of the camera if someone is taking a photo of you? I don't, I don't th think I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I kind of do a lot of 
self-portraits. I have a timer. I'm actually doing a self-portrait project at the moment called 52 Weeks. We have to take a photo every week. And, um, um, but yeah, and I'll do that with my family photos and stuff. So, so, so kind of, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But, um, but also photo shoots wise, it's like after a while, you just, I get a bit like, oh, you know, I'll get over it now. But um, so I, I totally understand that you have to put yourself in front of the camera. Otherwise you, you don't understand what the other person is kind of going through, you know? So yeah. um, I, I do understand how difficult it is to be in front of the camera, but, um, but yeah, you can, I can, I can relax, but I, but after a while it, it does get a bit hard. So it's helping that person maintain that, that enjoyment through the photo shoot because I know yeah. that after a while it gets a bit draining. Um, like with what we do at She Was Shine, often I need to, like a, photo, a photo, a headshot of our members for whatever purpose. And the photographers always, oh, I shouldn't say always, 80% of the time are the ones that are like, oh, I'll have to find a headshot. Like I don't have one. And I'm like, well, that needs to change. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes when I set up, because I do have a like a home studio that I'll set up for for headshots that are more kind of purely headshots, and so sometimes, so I can just quickly like I'll set up the lights and whatever, and I'm like, okay, I'll just do, I'll do the test shot, and then sometimes I'll just like, okay, I'll just update my headshot. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am going to ask you one more question, and that is, what has been, I guess, professionally, business wise, what's been the highlight for you as a business owner since you started your business? I think when you get responses from people that um, say that they knew they cry when they see their gallery because they, they um, you know, being a mom or, you know, it's being in the family, like life is hard regardless of what it is. And, you know, and sometimes I guess, and so when they kind of see that you you really captured us, and you really they can see that that love in the in those those photos, and and sometimes they may not have even felt you know on the day you know things like sometimes they're like oh the kids aren't doing what I think they should be doing kind of thing, and I feel, you know I've, we all feel that way, but it's in those moments that you you capture where they kind of see the 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 realness of their their family and what it is yeah. and it brings you know kind of tears to their eyes I think that those are the that's the real the real highlights and um, so that's probably been yeah which is why I say I don't I don't want to give it up that kind yeah. of that that photography but also you know the commercial stuff as well I like I said I just I really enjoy and you know when I get feedback and just that kind of working as well with um, in a team I really enjoy that too you know when you're working with a business owner and you're working with some models or or you know it's um it's quite fun I really enjoy that too it'd yeah. be much different vibe too than the family I'd imagine like just the the on the day would run very differently to how a family shoot would run it, it is very different um yeah and and I guess I like that that um diversity I suppose yeah. in the, in the work that I do because it yeah it um, creates a bit of balance and um, but yeah it's it's fun working with in in the different ways that I do so I really enjoy that. I think it's awesome Wendy how you've kind of um, like you've merged all your loves into one thing and it's not set in stone it's kind of it moves as you move if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think that's awesome I think that's really um uh, a testament to you and you know what you've been through and where you've been and what you've achieved um but also what what you're happy with like what you want for your life yeah well I think I, I went through this whole thing for a while of like and I, I remember chatting to you about it's like oh I'm sp I should split my brand and yeah, you know this and then and and there's this like you're saying there's this real pressure to feel like I had to do that and um but it just didn't sit it didn't I don't know it kind of felt like but it's not who I am in the sense of yeah I don't know I just didn't it didn't work for me I felt like it was too much work and it's like to me it was like well I am both of these things and so why not why not just be both of these things <laughs> but you know what I think that comes with getting older as well like you have that you start to have more confidence in who you are like you know yourself better mm. than you know you're not trying to be shaped into something else it's kind of like oh no this is who I am now 
Yeah. And you sort of start to accept that. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for your time, Wendy. It's been a pleasure. It's been a while that we've been trying to sort of get you on our podcast. So I'm glad that we finally did it. Yay! Finally did it. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure and it's always a pleasure chatting to you. And um, so, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. So thank you. Thank you. Have a fabulous day. And thank you to everyone for joining us. We will be with you soon with another episode of the She Will Shine podcast. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode of the She Will Shine podcast, we invite you to check out shewillshine.com.au. She Will Shine is the essential support network you need to grow a thriving, meaningful business. We can help you grow your network, connect and develop genuine relationships, be supported and support others in building and growing a successful business on your terms. Say goodbye to working alone and become a member at shewillshine.com.au.